Hello from Neil and me. Welcome to the programme. First tonight, calls for one of our MPs to resign from his government post after newspaper revelations that he hired private detectives to investigate party colleagues. Huntington MP Jonathan Ginogli says he wanted to find out who was making malicious allegations about him. Now, one of the people investigated has called for him to stand down from his position in the Justice Department. Tom Barton has more. When he was first elected as MP for Huntingdon in 2001, Jonathan Ginogli was surrounded by supporters and local colleagues. Eight years later, he secretly hired private detectives to investigate members of his local Conservative Party. They included former Tory leader of Huntingdon Council, Derek Holly. I was astounded. Uh, it's an extraordinary situation, uh, even though it's a year ago to find that you've been the subject of an investigation along with uh, two or three other people, um, to find out that uh, has been done in a, a manner of subterfuge. The Huntingdon MP hired investigators to root out the source of rumours that he'd used parliamentary expenses to pay his au pair, something he's always denied. Mr Ginogli apparently hired the investigators because he wanted to know what people in the local party were saying about him. Their final report can't have made pleasant reading. His colleagues are reported to have said to the investigators that he was lazy and a wet fish. One said, we need to deselect him. There was no sign of the Justice Minister at his constituency home near Huntingdon today, but in a statement he said, I'm sorry if some people judge that I made a mistake. With hindsight I can see that I may have overreacted, but I was being subjected to very malicious, anonymous attacks on my family. There was some sympathy among his constituents in Huntingdon today. If someone's making uh, complaints about me, I'd like to know all about it. And if I've got the money to hire private investigators, I would do it. People's lives are private, aren't they? And I don't think that's correct to do that. What he did was fair and, well, maybe not fair, but, you know, right. I would have done it, definitely. He is, of course, a minister in the Justice Department. Yes. Do you think he can maintain his position as minister? I think it may be difficult in the short term, but uh, as I said just now, he's got to make that decision himself, not me. But would you support him carrying on, or do you think, personally, he should be stepping down? I think it might be best if he stood aside for a while, personally. As Downing Street sources said today that Jonathan Ginogli's behaviour cannot be condoned, he could find that he's battling for his ministerial future. Tom Barton, Anglia News, Huntingdon. Well, Tom Barton is in his Huntingdon constituency for us tonight. Uh, Tom, what next for Mr Ginogli? Well, there are questions being asked tonight about that job in the Ministry of Justice. As you've heard, some of those are being asked from right here in the constituency. Perhaps unsurprisingly, they're also being asked by Labour's Shadow Justice Minister, Maria Eagle. Perhaps the worst news, those to, though, tonight for Jonathan Ginogli comes from number 10, where we are told uh, David Cameron has given him that most dreaded of endorsements. Jonathan Ginogli does have the Prime Minister's full confidence. OK, thank you, Tom. A prolific distraction burglar who preyed on more than 100 elderly women has been jailed for 11 years. Posing as policeman, waterboard or electrician, Neil Seagrave from Norwich stole more than £40,000 from victims across the country. Police said Seagrave was a horrible man. Natalie Gray was in court. The face of a con man whose oldest victim was 101. Neil Seagrave used an internet tracing site to find the addresses of elderly lone females, the red dots representing the extent of his crimes. Joy Viner is 91 and from Norwich, one of Seagrave's 101 victims. Using a fake warrant card, he pretended to be a policeman, though he also posed as a waterboard official and an electrician. I think he must have the devil in him. He's certainly not on the good side, is he? <laughs> Definitely not. And 11 years isn't a long time for him to learn what he's done. Once inside, Seagrave would rifle through drawers, stealing more than £40,000 in a 10-month campaign. One woman in her 80s from Goulston in Norfolk lost £5,000 she'd been saving to buy her disabled grandson prosthetic legs. Another woman, aged 96 from Norwich, is so traumatised after losing £500 that she's become bedridden. It's a typical um, example of the cowardly man that he is. He's picked on these women p purely because of their age, purely because of their vulnerability and purely because he knows they won't fight back. He's quite horrible. He's, I can't put that other word. He's quite a horrible man. 
This woman from Kings Lynn said he even took advantage of her blind neighbour. Uh, well, all folk tend to trust people, you know, but not now. Judge Simon Barham described Seagrave's crimes as despicable and jailed him for 11 years. Joy, meanwhile, says she'll sleep easy now. Natalie Gray, Anglia News, Norwich. Next tonight, fresh questions over the value of police community support officers after a school was told PCSOs were not qualified to help children cross the road. Yes, pupils at primary school in Pilgrim's Hatch near Brentwood need to cross a busy road to get to church, but a team of PCSOs aren't allowed to help them anymore. Essex police say it's down to a lack of resources. Lorna Ramsey has the story. Children can do it, grandads can do it, but it seems to be a problem for PCSOs. I would have thought if they're trained to keep um, villains at bay, etc., walking around, I would think they should be capable of taking some children across the road and putting their hand up and stopping traffic. If they can't get the kids across the road and they're not allowed, you know, you see things they're not allowed to give first aid and you know, they're not allowed to intervene in other things. What are they doing? For the last three years, PCSOs have been helping children from Bentley St Paul's School cross this road to get to this church three times a year. But now the school is having to fork out nearly £2,000 to get two proper police officers to do it. The school says the police told them PCSOs weren't properly trained. But today, Essex Police said due to increased pressures on resources, it's not possible for PCSOs to provide a personal crossing service as these officers have other roles in the community and may be required elsewhere at short notice. PCSOs were introduced in 2002 and although they wear a uniform similar to the police's, they don't have their powers. They can't carry handcuffs, they don't have the power of arrest and they can't conduct interviews. But they can detain someone for up to half an hour until an officer arrives, issue fixed penalty notices and confiscate alcohol being drunk in alcohol-free zones. The school and police are trying to come to some arrangement because pupils have been attending this church for the last 100 years and the school doesn't want to see bureaucracy stand in the way of tradition. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, Pilgrim's Hatch. Well, it is coming up to nine minutes past.